to the Admiral Bill Stubblefield and Maria Lawrenson. And uh, thank you to all you funny people out there who send me interesting images of people with automatic rifle fire and machine guns firing shots across the border here. Uh, follow. We were, you know, sometimes the the bell saves you from a knockout at the end of a fight. <laughs> And that might have been an instant right there. It, it where was, the bell came just in time. It was. A I don't know that it came just in time. Just saying. <laughs> it it um, was a is a colorful interview. Well, he yeah. went. He went. Didn't need a whole lot of provocation. I thought Al- Alex just, was doing pretty good went. up until yeah. that point where we we began uh, with the, that last part of firing shots there. Yeah. Uh, in studio with Delegate Paul Espinosa, who is running for the uh, uh, state senate the seat currently held by the incumbent Patricia Rucker. Paul, good morning. Thanks so much for coming in. Good morning. Good to be here. Talk about tough acts to follow. <laughs> and you brought dessert, too. Well, uh, I know you guys like to uh, stay Indulged. nourished, uh, especially during the expanded uh, bonus hour. Yeah. Uh, bonus hour. So uh, uh, plenty of uh, calories in those containers. Yeah, they don't keep There's no out. calories in there, are there, Paul? It's amazing what they can do with Splenda. You know? Okay. We need a dentist on site. <laughs> Just, Why? There's a lot of sugar floating around this room. Just a lot of a lot of sugar. So these are from Royalicious, they wonderful yes. place in Jefferson County. Yes, uh, just all kinds of goodness there. Uh, brought you some cinnamon sticks. Oh, yeah. Which I believe uh, Kresha is enjoying one as we speak. Mm, and yes, uh, uh, lovely. Stick. And then there's some chocolate uh, cigars that, uh, in case the cinnamon sticks aren't enough for you, they so. smell delicious. Yeah. By the way. So enjoy. Uh, it. It's well, a good place. You've had a you've had a lot of um, leadership positions uh, in your time in the House. You've been in the House ten years. Uh, this is my twelfth year. Twelfth year. Yeah. Twelve years. Okay. Uh, of the leadership positions you've held, which one have you enjoyed the most? Wow, that's really tough. Um, of course, my first leadership position was uh, House Education Chair. Uh, as as I've discussed on this program, had actually planned to run for Senate yeah. back in 2015. And Ironically, then, it's the position that delayed you from running for Senate. That's yeah. right. And uh, But uh, I think serving in that role, and even though our numbers were fairly tight at that point, and I knew that we really couldn't enact some of the education reform that I was hoping, I knew that we could kind of at least get that get the ball started. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, how West Virginia compared to other states, the fact that, you know, we really didn't have much in the way of education choice for parents and students. One of my goals all along was to just ensure that our parents and students had the same options that other states have. And you look at public charter schools, for example. I, I'm not suggesting that public charter schools are the are the end all to uh, uh, solving our education challenges, but. 44 states at the time and uh, in the District of Columbia had access to public charter schools. My question always was, you know, why, why should West Virginia parents and students not have the same options? And the same thing now with uh, educational savings accounts, our Hope Scholarship Program that I was pleased to sponsor and help shepherd through. Uh, it, it's about just making sure that our parents and students have options. And I think one of the things we saw uh, during the pandemic was that our parents and students were desperate for options. I certainly recognize it was a very, very challenging time in public education, but uh, our parents certainly uh, wanted to have options and uh, was very pleased that we have been able to do that. So kind of a long way of saying that I think education was probably, you know, always where kind of my heart has been. Uh, but I, I really have enjoyed uh, my previous role as House Majority Whip, where I could continue to advocate for education reform, you know, both for, uh, for education choice as well as traditional education. And then in my more recent role, really uh, as Speaker Pro Tempore, uh, get an opportunity to really um, practice some of my parliamentary procedure that really I first learned back when I was in high school as a participant in the a uh, youth and government program, which I still uh, serve as as uh, co-chair, along with uh, President Blair of the Youth and Government Committee that allows students uh, like myself back uh, when I was in high school to participate in that program and have always enjoyed a parliamentary procedure. Uh, will never even come close to approaching the proficiency of Speaker Roger Hanshaw, who, who of course, is a nationally recognized uh, parliamentarian. But I do enjoy presiding in his absence and uh, getting a chance to to practice some of that. So have been very, very fortunate to uh, serve in a variety of those roles. Are you still employed at Rockwell? I am, yes. Yeah, public affairs manager. Uh, Barbara Fuller earlier this morning running in the 98th for your seat. 
uh, interestingly enough, uh, talked about the uh, assimilation of Rockwell into the economic community and the community in it of itself in Jefferson and described it now as just something that's there and it's, things seem to have settled down uh, around that itself. Can you talk about the economic impact of Rockwell in Jefferson County? Well, I will tell you that all of my adult life I've been an advocate for job creation. I think one of the things that I've always lamented is the fact that um, a lot of our folks in, in West Virginia, both young and, and older, uh, really, uh, you know, we're almost forced to leave Jefferson County on a daily basis in order to um, to find employment. Uh, certainly, we still have a lot of folks that work uh, down in Northern Virginia and D.C., uh, some in Baltimore as well, uh, on a daily basis. And my goal all along has been to just try to provide options. Uh, I think Berkeley County has done a pretty good job of attracting, you know, uh, job creators, Procter & Gamble, Macy's, Clorox, uh, Quad Graphics, uh, just to name a few. And uh, it, it had always been my goal, even back before I was in the legislature as a member of the Jefferson County Development Authority, just trying to make sure that we have options, uh, well-paying jobs with benefits, so that those folks who would like to be employed closer to home could do so. I think, uh, you know, if you look at an employer like Rockwell, 130 people on staff, uh, operating 24-7, you look at the B&O tax that uh, that facility generates for uh, the city of Ranson, uh, that facility is located in the city of Ranson, uh, I think at the last I looked, I thought it was approaching a half billion dollars just in B&O tax for the city of Ranson, not to uh, speak of just the... Um, you know, the uh, the impact uh, just through uh, payroll uh, deductions and so forth. So I think it certainly has a big impact. And, you know, I, th I think as a lifelong resident of Jefferson County and of the Eastern Panhandle, uh, certainly I I want to try to maintain the bucolic nature of, of uh, Jefferson County and the Eastern Panhandle. But I think there is a balance uh, to be sought after to where we can have uh, good, well-paying jobs uh, with benefits so that folks do have options. And I think uh, particularly for the folks that are employed at some of our area employers, you know, when you can start off with virtually no experience at $21 an hour or more with benefits, I mean, those are those are very attractive jobs and certainly I think allow folks to, uh, you know, be employed here in the community, obviously be be more active in the community if they're, you know, if they're uh, working here as opposed to having to travel outside the area. Maria. So how do you do that, Paul? I mean, uh, because all you have to do is drive down Route 9 and just see an explosion, if you will, of housing developments continues um, to happen. And we know why that happens. It's a beautiful place to live. Like you said, bucolic nature, um, you know, just wonderful um, family values um, in Jefferson County, but yet um, how do you create this economic engine um, in Berkeley and Jefferson or continue it um, to assure that people aren't just, just, that people aren't living here and working somewhere else? Yeah. It's a big, big challenge, and I, I tell you, I don't envy our local leaders. However, one of my philosophies ever since I was elected to office back in 2012 was to try to drive as much decision-making to our local officials as possible. Again, I don't envy their decisions uh, that they have to make, but I do think the closer those decisions are made to uh, their constituents, I think the better. While we at the state level, I think, can certainly play a major role in helping to make sure that we have a business climate that is attractive to uh, job creators, uh, you know, uh, the, the work that we've done with tax reform, with legal reform, uh, the work that we did to get off the judicial hellhole list so that we're not viewed by job creators as a place where there's a great deal of uncertainty as to how um, how you might fare in court if you, if you are, uh, you know, uh, engaged in a, in a court case. Regulatory reform, you just name it, just across the board, I think we've done a great job of improving our biz business climate to where we are attracting a lot of uh, great job creators. I do think it's uh, ultimately up to our local officials, or uh, particularly in, in, in Jefferson County, our, our county commission, um, and uh, our municipal of officials. Berkeley County wrestles with some of the same challenges. Again, I, 
as difficult as it is, I think that's where those decisions should be made. And I certainly I, I appreciate that all folks should be able to weigh in, uh, have a say there, and uh, uh, you know help to uh, try to determine you know what they do want uh, here in this area. But you you hit the nail on the head, Maria. I mean, why would folks not want to locate here? I, th- I think one of the one of the um, results of the pandemic is folks trying to get out of the city, more congested areas. Our state park visitorship in West Virginia is through the roof. And I mean, that's great news for trying to in- increase our population so that we're not facing some of the challenges that go along with loss of population. But I think uh, it's it's the, the secret's out of the bag. If, if there was ever a secret, it's just that uh, this is a beautiful place to live. And I can appreciate why people would want to uh, move out here and uh, and have a lovely home out here. Billy. Paul, Paul, I want to come back to the campaign just a second. But sure. I want to push back upon your point that businesses will want to come here. Same thing that Barbara Fuller uh, mentioned earlier. There have been several businesses thinking about Jefferson County, not Berkeley, because there's a difference in night and day between the two. Uh, Rockwall is a good example. The solar farms is another example. Uh, these We have solar farms in Berkeley County. They're being embraced. We have businesses in Berkeley County that have been embraced. Uh, Jefferson County has, re- has pushed back on these, pushed back on the pilot program, pushed back on anything that would be an inducement to businesses. So uh, just saying that it's a great place to live it is a wonderful place to live but jefferson's county has has got to demonstrate to industry that it's a good place to locate a business and they have not done that yet well bill i don't disagree with your assessment there i think there's clearly you know some differences in in approaches uh, in jefferson and berkeley county and and that's that's changed over time i think you you know you look at uh, county commissions uh, over the last uh, number of years, you, you've had situations where you've had county visions, uh, county commissions that are less interested in in economic development, you know, attracting businesses. Others that are viewed as more pro business. Same thing with your local uh, councils and so mm-hmm. forth. And uh, uh, that is, uh, I think, a little bit of a challenge uh, to attract uh, job creators, uh, but. I think, uh, you know, certainly uh, recognize, uh, you know, some of the uh, controversy surrounding uh, uh, Rockwell and, and folks that, you know, are on both sides of that issue. I think as we get that, uh, that uh, time a little bit further in our rear, rear view mirror, I'd liken it almost to uh, the, uh, 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 the establishment of the casino at the racetrack. You may recall that it seems like uh, a long eons time ago, ago. Yeah. but I mean, yeah. but that was a very controversial issue. But I think as 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 uh, the uh, Hollywood Casino folks were able to demonstrate that they could operate that in a very responsible way, I think that certainly uh, helped uh, you know help folks to feel more comfortable about about the casino. I think while uh, I doubt. I doubt personally that there's going to be any more significant manufacturing industry, and in, particularly in Jefferson County, in the foreseeable future. I do think there's opportunities for, you know, good, responsible um, economic development. But I think it's going to still take a little bit more time in order for that to happen. I hope you're right, Paul. But let's go back to the campaign. We sure. have five days, five days to go. Uh, when are you going to start putting some distance between you and Patricia Rucker and the reverse is true as well? Right now, the two of you are very, very polite to each other, but it's hard to see any daylight between the two of you. And yet we're coming to the end of the campaign. When you say put distance between, do you mean make it clear who the choice yeah, should be? Yeah, exactly right. What the main Thank differences you. are? Yeah. That's, Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a fair question. Uh, you know, certainly I've tried to be very positive in my campaign, pointing out what I can bring to the role. Unfortunately, my opponent has start, engaged in some paid negative, negative advertising, which to me I think starts to uh, indicate that uh, things are just as I'm seeing out on the campaign trail, you know, that uh, I am, uh, you know, uh, uh, attracting, you know, uh, positive support. And, um, I would say, Bill, uh, the, the thing that I probably differentiates us the most, and, and frankly, one of the reasons why I, uh, started to reconsider, uh, a run for the, for the state Senate was just what I was starting to see, um, you know, uh, in, in surrounding states, talking with some other, some colleagues from other states, uh, how some of the divisiveness that we're seeing in, in Washington 
how that was starting to move down to our state legislators, uh, legislatures. And certainly uh, Senator Rucker has been a part of that. I mean, she certainly acknowledged her, her uh, leadership role in the so-called Freedom Caucus, which frankly, uh, you know, on the national level has been kind of referred to as the Chaos Caucus at, at, some, at, uh, at some times. Uh, and, you know, that, that troubled me because uh, certainly I recognize we're going to have differences on policy, and, and that's, fa- that's fine. I mean, certainly in my, in my 12 years in legislature, you know, I don't agree with, uh, with our leadership on every uh, thing or, or my colleagues on everything, but uh, I think uh, the way that those uh, organizations have gone about, you know, trying to unseat in the case of uh, the Eastern Panhandle, you know, we have a we have a Senate president for the first time in ever, I believe, uh, that we've had a, a person in that leadership role. Same thing in the House, uh, trying to unseat an individual who I regard as one of the best speakers that we've ever had in in, uh, in uh, Speaker Hanshaw. And again, I just I reject that divisiveness, that divisive approach uh, to uh, to things. And so I do think that that's become a differentiator in this campaign. If you look at the way that I've conducted myself as House Education Chair, as House Majority Whip, and now as Speaker Pro Temporary, uh, I've demonstrated what you can accomplish when you work together as a team in a collaborative manner rather than engage in this divisive uh, Washington-style politics. And I think that's resonating with folks. Uh, over the uh, last uh, several months, and even leading back into the fall, uh, myself and volunteers, we've literally canvassed uh, thousands of doors. And particularly here recently, I'm just hearing more and more folks as we engage uh, during those uh, those canvassing opportunities and other opportunities. Folks are just fed up with a lot of this divisiveness and this negative uh, advertising. And so I think that's probably one of the things that, uh, that I think uh, differentiates us. So the difference between you and Senator Rucker, if you could um, give it to us in a nutshell, what's the difference? Well, it's just the collaborative uh, consensus building approach that I've demonstrated and that will continue to demonstrate if I'm fortunate to be elected to the state Senate. I think just working as a team. I, I think there's a there's a value in doing that. Are you that. saying she does not work as a team member? Well, I think you can see uh, just from uh, the way that she's conducted herself. Uh, certainly other folks can, shoot, can, uh, can make that conclusion on their own. But I think just the approach that... Uh, that she's taken, um, not only individually, but as part of a, of a group of individuals, just, you know, can, can trying you get, to be more divisive than, uh, than, can you give an example, Paul, in, uh, how, uh, Senator Rucker has been divisive as opposed to working as a team? Well, you just look at, uh, look at the, um, the effort, uh, to unseat our Senate president, uh, from the Eastern Panhandle. I mean, it's like, um, to me, uh, uh President Blair and I, we, we certainly don't agree on every issue, but I certainly believe that there's value in having a Senate president from the Eastern Panhandle as opposed to uh, basically uh, someone who would probably be a backbencher. And so, um, again, I think that's that's part of it. I think another issue— You're saying she's working behind the scenes to unseat Craig? Well, I mean, I Is think— that what you're implying think, by that? I think that's pretty apparent. I mean, I don't think that's behind the scenes. I mean, I think that's been pretty, pretty visible. The— um, I think another issue uh, that I think differentiates us, uh, Bill, is just our our role on tort reform. I've certainly been a longtime sponsor, advocate of tort reform, um, and I do think that that's been a big part of just creating a business environment where, again, job creators feel more comfortable locating here. Now, to be clear, I want to balance the legal system because we can all be either plaintiffs or defendants at any given time, but clearly I think we were way too far uh, you know, in a, in a in a manner in which job creators just really didn't feel very comfortable uh, uh, that if they were in court that they were going to f- get a fair uh, fair shake. And so, by enacting a lot of the tort reform that I uh, helped sponsor uh, in the House, we were able to get off of that judicial hellhole list and make our state more attractive to pr- to prospective employers. You look at the my opponent's uh, first quarter uh, campaign finance report, nearly 70% of her donations were from the plaintiff's bar, from trial lawyers. It's pretty clear that they would prefer her to sit on Senate Judiciary, which is the seat that I would likely uh, have uh, if I'm uh, 
uh, elected to the Senate. I'd likely uh, serve on Senate Judiciary. I know Senator uh, Barrett, who would be the senior uh, senator, he's made very clear that he'd prefer to be on Senate Finance. So I think that's the way it would shake out. And I think it's pretty clear where the plaintiff's bar uh, comes down on that. And so I think that's a clear difference of where I would be. Again, I'm willing to listen to all parties, but I do want to make sure that we have a balanced legal system, not tilted one way or the other. Paul, it's, uh, the, the perception is that Senator Rucker is a very conservative, ultra-conservative uh, senator. How do you think you're regarded in, rega- in, in terms of your spectrum in the Republican Party where you fall? Well, if you uh, look at CPAC, which is uh, a Republican organization that ranks uh, legislators, uh, you might be surprised to learn that I actually have the most conservative lifetime voting record with CPAC. So, you know, if you look really across the board, uh, as far as my pro-life, pro-life um, uh, uh, record, uh, 24 out of 24 pro-life votes, I mean, 100% uh, rating there. Uh, a rated by the NRA, A plus by the West Virginia uh, Civil Defense League, Citizens Defense League. Um, you know, certainly uh, endorsed by a host of uh, pro jobs advocacy organizations out there. I think I enjoy a very conservative uh, uh, rating, but I think more than that, uh, I, I view myself, and I think uh, uh, folks who I speak with uh, uh, view me as a consensus builder, someone who's going to work together to try to get things accomplished rather than uh, really engage in, in, a, in a, a divisive approach uh, to legislating. A minute left. Go ahead and take it and campaign. Tell people why they should vote for you. Well, uh, thank you. But thank you all three uh, for having me this morning. Um, I, I certainly have been honored to serve in the West Virginia legislature for the last 12 years. And uh, it's really been the honor of my life to represent the Eastern Panhandle in the West Virginia legislature. Uh, I do um, believe that uh, I can effectively uh, represent the Eastern Panhandle in the West Virginia Senate. While I'm certainly proud of the legislative accomplishments that I've had uh, during the last 12 years, I do believe ultimately it's about who can best represent the 16th district going forward. Uh, I have been um, um, endorsed by a number of uh, um, pro-jobs groups, uh, the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the West Virginia Manufacturers Association, the West Virginia Business and Industry Council, just to name a few. I respectfully ask my fellow residents of the 16th District for their vote. For those who would like more information on my candidacy, I would invite you to visit my uh, website at www.espinosaforsenate.com. Paul, good luck to you. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. Thanks Great. for coming Go. in. And, thank, uh, thank you. Thanks for the, the good desserts. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy. That doesn't hurt either, does it, Bill? Not at all. Not at all. That's Indeed. kind of that's a litmus test we put every <laughs> every candidate through. This segment of our program today brought to you in part by Elder Care Attorney Danny Staggers in downtown Martinsburg. Also uh, by the Berkeley.